Hey guys, welcome back to Watchbox and Watch This Tonight. I'm not Tim Maso. He's out for the day, but I'll be taking over duties. I'm CQ the Watch Guy, your favorite uh, substitute teacher. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Happy Friday. This is The Trading Desk. My name is Joshua Thanos, and this is my mother from another brother, Jason Maine. First, you know, there was a, a few cool releases from, you know, the pre-SIHH, the Whispers, you are coming out, so I want to talk a little bit about that before we jumped into the, the big stake tonight. Um, IWC gave us a couple, um, I said four new pilots. I really, really uh, enjoy the new stuff. Um, well, let's pull up a picture here. Which one are we going to start with? All right, so this one's really, um, of course... Out of the world, it's a Constance Force Turbion um, edition of the Petit Prince. There's a couple of reasons why I really, really like this watch beyond it being a Constance Force Turbion. First, it's using their new um, hard goal, which is supposed to be five to ten times harder than normal goal, which I really I'm interested to see in person and play with a little bit because gold watches the one thing that if it's not fully brushed, I always have like an issue with because a super polished watch, mm -hmm. you know. You blow on it, you can get scratches. So it's going to be nice to see how that actually, you know, compares to, like, let's say, Magic Gold from Hublot, but I think it definitely has more of a deep richness to it. Um, of course, the Le Petit Blue Dial, which we love. And if you look at the moon phase, it's actually the prince is standing up there. And I think that's just, that, that's just awesome, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I think that's an amazing highlight uh, for this piece. I like, yeah, everything. I like the dial layout and everything. Um, and uh, it looks, from the picture that I can see here, definitely looks nicer um, in terms of gold uh, like being a harder gold material than the hublot uh, yeah the magic gold did. definitely has kind of like um what's the word i guess paleness or, or, or dullness to it it's yeah, just not as um yeah, maybe, yeah, it's not as rich of course you can really you know beat it to you know beat it down the road and it looks beautiful but i was always looking for something that wanted to be a denser type of gold but actually give me that real you know rose gold mm -hmm. look so i'm excited to see um this watch for that plus it's you know a constant force turbine let's not forget <laughs> yeah and it, I, it does i'm just kind of noticing right now too it does like it has brushed with a bit of the polish bezel on there too which yeah, which yeah, nice. yeah. will be a, a lot of a lot of cool texture going on there and let's make this one quick let's go to the next piece this one's kind of unobtainable you know only 10 pieces out there so i don't want to spend too much time on it but this is a, a really cool piece that came out with the time zoner spitfire edition uh also limited to about 250 pieces they came out with the, um, the time zoner last year as a chronograph which i, I thought it did very well mm -hmm. you could change the time zones just by adjusting the bezel there um but i like this version without the chronograph really cleans up the dial there's still a lot going on but i think just kind of a, a really uh, a beautiful layout for it yeah it yeah great. no i agree totally I think it's a great watch. I, I like the previous version of this watch too, of the well, just of the world timer. Yeah. Um, you know, which didn't have the onion crown and all that, but uh, yeah, I really like this version of it too. Yeah, I think I think this this will do very well. I'm excited for IWC. I feel like they're you know in the past couple of years have really been introducing some nice pieces and limited runs, not really flooding the market that a lot mm -hmm. of brands try to do. And I think people are buying them. I think that um, the, the Jubilee series um, last year the you know anything we got we sold pretty fast and even pre-owned you're not really seeing them because people are like holding on keeping those pieces yeah. so i think idbc is definitely heading in the right direction and um i don't know i definitely want to i, I kind of want this watch it's pretty cool <laughs> i like this watch a lot yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah it, it gives that uh that military feel a little bit as well and um let's just skip on to the next one let's keep it moving so this watch, I actually do think I'm going to try to put my name on a list for. And this is the Pilot's um, Spitfire Chrono in bronze, 41 millimeter case. I love bronze. I've been um, playing around with a lot of bronze watches in my head, you know, thinking I, I might want to go that route. Of course, you know, the, the Tudor Black Bay bronze, you mm -hmm. know, definitely was probably the front runner. But I'm seeing this, and I, I do love, you know, the Spitfire Chrono. And I think this, with the green dial, it just gives me the look. I think I might change the strap a little bit, but I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, I love it too. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of toss up between my favorite between this and um, the time zoner. But then you also pointed out that that is a 41 millimeter case size too on the bronze. Yeah, it's um, a little bit slimmer than, than the normal 43 yeah, that, which that we see out there. I like. I have a smaller wrist. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a great size. I still have to see it in person. But, um, but yeah, love that watch too. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still holding out for like a 43 
big pilot with oh, an yeah. onion crown or something oh, like that. Hey, I hope they that, do that at some that, point. But that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, speaking of wrists, let's, let's do a little quick wrist check. What, what's on What's on your wrist today? Yeah. So this is my. Um, it's a pretty cool piece. Universal uh, Geneve pole router. So it's definitely. Um, it's you know, classy, vintage John. piece. Yeah, and saying, you Philly. and uh, you and Jay did yeah. a show that was like, yeah, well, that, like right man, after it, I it feels like yesterday, but so. maybe a year ago yeah. on um, a little show called Dialing with CQ and Jay. Yeah, um, we did talk about the pole routers when we were talking about um, Gerald Genta designs, and it's so um, it's, it's so crazy. They, they, they got a good look up over there. Right, you get it. Yeah, shine. Let, let the people see what's going on. Yeah, and so, this uh, beautiful pie pan dial. Um, what, what, what year would you say this piece is? Uh, it's got to be mid to late 50s. I, I don't know a ton about the watch, um, like the history of this specific one. But, yeah, it's definitely a piece. I love just the story behind it and everything like that. And this one, the dial looks like it may have they have, may have attempted to like clean it up or something. Um, I would have still liked it if it had natural patina on it or whatever the case is. But um, no, it's a classy piece. But I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong with a, a pie pan from yeah. that era. I kind know? of bought it on a whim, just like no questions asked. It is how it is, how it runs, and everything. It's been great. Yes. And today I'm just going with a little. Come get me. AP diver, all ceramic. I just I don't know. I'm love this watch. Beat it up all day. Can't scratch it. And that little touch orange, you know, for Syracuse, the orange, man, for the fans out there, you know. I know we'll be back. <laughs> Just let them know. All right, great. Uh, so we got two winners under our belts. We got some more categories yeah, there, Jay. Yeah, we do. Uh, right. So category number three. Okay. So now we're, we went to, we went from most height to sleeper. Now we're going to... Worst performer. That's right. So uh, in terms of market value or retail sales, the worst performer of the year. The watches that just end up being duds, unfortunately. All right, so what do we have in terms of nominees this year, Jason? So I think it's uh, had to be number one, and uh, that's going to be the uh, Breitling Navitimer 8 series. Okay, so that's the first nominee. Yeah. First nominee for worst performer of the year. Uh, this yeah. was... A uh, complete swing and a miss from uh, as far as pretty much everybody in the watch industry is concerned mm -hmm. is in regards to Breitling's first attempt to revamp the brand. Yeah. And uh, well, new ownership. Yeah, new ownership, new tooling. And apparently. we're like, man, they're going to do it. Go yeah. back to your roots, make a new Navitimer. This is awesome. And then just kind of missed the mark. And I think a lot of people were really disappointed in this watch. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people said, well, let's wait and see it in person and still well, didn't deliver. What's funny is, as a side note, the new premieres are actually really nice watches. And we were like those and they should have just, you yeah. know, released those, even though the price point's a little bit too high in my opinion. The premieres are, should have been the first release. I think that would have brought yeah. A lot so of, there's some running speculation, and I would probably tend to agree that because a project of this magnitude takes so long that the new management kind of inherited this project. Sure. And so much R&D and tooling and all mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that you just had to release it. Gotcha. Um, so, but yeah, all first right. a nominee of this Way category. Way to soften the blow. All yeah. right, so the second nominee for worst performer in terms of market value or retail sales is going to be, it hurts me to say, Vintage Panerize. Ooh. So we've seen a steady decline in market value of vintage Panerai's over the last, say, five, ten years. Really, well, I'd say five years, right? For sure, seven, eight years. Um, Panerai two hundred threes, Panerai one twenty sevens, fifty two eighteens of different, uh, you know, uh, of different um, variations. The three forty one. All these watches have come down, probably halved in market value, and this year. Really didn't help. It just slow, steady decline, and I think that's due to, you know, Panerai's new direction and a lot of old, old time Panerai collectors just feeling like they've been abandoned. Listen, I understand. You know, Panerai went in a new direction. They made watches like the Douay, and they're releasing new in-house movements and focusing on other things than what their heritage really was. You know, tourbillons and going, you know, laser or yeah, laser printed uh, titanium cases for tourbillons and things like that. Things that Panerai hadn't done in the past. So. What's the casualty? Vintage Panerai, unfortunately. Yeah, it's been a very steep uh, downward hill, mm -hmm. apparently, uh, over the last couple of years. It's been rough to watch. Uh, 
what, 12, maybe 15 months ago, we saw a little bit of an uptick for Panerai, and then it kind of just dropped But not for vintage. Vintage yeah, has always just, been going it's down. Been, it's been bad. Well, the, um, the contemporary stuff is is doing all right yeah, in market I mean, value. That not. took a dive, too, but it's all that stuff, uh, the contemporary stuff, for the most part, is kind of, yeah. you, you know, it's, the it's in part. when, like, pre-Vendome and, like, A, right. a cereals meant something. That's what we're like, talking yeah, about. Yeah, those, exactly. Those but, are the vintage pieces that we're talking about. A cereals, pre I mean, I have an A cereal O2. Is worth, I don't know, three, four grand. Same as like every other O2 now. Right, exactly. Except so, yours has water damage. Yeah, mine is. Yeah. And, and no value. So, all right. Uh, worst performer of the year. Third nominee is the JLC Polaris line. Ooh, so we talked about this in terms of hype because there was a lot of hype be, uh, coming out behind this line. And people were really, really excited for this. And, hey, you know, JLC's back on the map. J, uh, Jason. Uh, Tim was, uh, was pretty excited. And, unfortunately, kind of a flop, Jay. Yeah, so this is going to be the only one that kind of hit uh, overhyped and flops, and uh, I think the reason there is that one or two of them stuck with guys, and then the rest well, the of the line out, just yeah. kind of poop plummeted. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah not a great uh, overall performance out of most of the line. I would say eighty yeah. percent of the line. Yeah, it's crappy. All right, and uh, fourth and final nominee for worst performer in terms of market value retail sales this year is Vacheron Constantine. Overseas Gen 3. So there you go. That now you so on the screen right now you're seeing the strongest performer in terms of these models, but honestly, they just it flopped. I mean, oh, I think the chrono, this chrono is about 30 grand. I mean, the watch itself, very well executed executed, right? Yeah. They they give you what they feel like is a lot of value. Unfortunately, they almost doubled the price point for the line itself, right? And they didn't. They, they made the watch a little bit too big, and they really didn't, they missed the mark big time. So this was another watch that probably could have been you know most overhyped watch of the year too. Very hyped. They put so much in terms of marketing and R and D, and I think that they just overinflated their costs. It seems like decided to overinflate the price points, and if they had dropped their price points out the gate probably 15, 20, 25% uh, in terms of uh, MSRPs. I feel like this would have done much better, but unfortunately, yeah, just kind of flopped. Another classic, uh, you know, error for VC overreaching. Yeah. I think uh, anytime you drop something like uh, Evolution and you instantaneously boost the value of the previous generation because yeah. nobody wants to set the new one, mm -hmm. uh, you got you to gotta reevaluate. Yeah. So hopefully next year is a reevaluation year. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, third category, worst performer, market value, retail sales. We had four nominees. We said Breitling, Navitimer 8, Vintage Panerai as a whole, JLC Polaris line, and the VC Gen 3. So, Jason? By far and away, uh, my pick for this category and for the 18 karat gold desky is the Breitling Navitimer 8. That is right. Have you sold any of these, Jason? I have not. Yeah, I haven't either. Unfortunately, I don't get any uh, any calls about them either. So, worst performer in terms of retail, for sure, is the Breitling Navitimer 8 this year. It's uh, been very disappointing. I'm sure uh, there's some people who bought them, and they maybe they like them, but unfortunately, as a whole, in terms of mass market, it just did not really get any traction. I will say, looking forward to positive signs from the Premier line, though. Yeah, cool, yeah. man.